It's very common to have both sensitivity and gum issues. Dentists and hygienists will want to recommend Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum. Do you get the sensitivity relief as well as improved gum health? All in one. And tonight's winning number, 43. Yes! The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent so you can use less. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. You know the Bahamas are a golfer's paradise. Yeah. And here at Bahamar, they have the... Happening now. The emergence of new video in a fatal 2019 shooting of a woman by an SAPD officer has the victim's family's attorney irritated on why it took so long to come out. Sunspring recall. Five spray-ons are recalled because of what they contain. Plus, recalls on baby rattles, kids' bikes, and cat food. And our active weather pattern may simmer down for a little bit. Wait till you see what's coming down the pipe. The News at 5 starts right now. First Step 5 recently unearthed body camera footage from a 2019 fatal shooting by a San Antonio police officer. Has the attorney for the victim's family surprised and fuming? We first told you about this yesterday. Hannah Westall fatally shot by SAPD Sergeant David Perry in March of 2019 while she was carrying a non-functional replica Uzi BB gun. Though officials have publicly said there was no body cam footage, that footage turned up this week and is prompting the district attorney's office to re-examine in the case. Our Garrett Berger looks at how the video apparently fell through the cracks. The video starts in the middle of the shooting of Hannah Westall, an event captured already on dashboard camera. Though the clip may not reveal much new about the shooting, its appearance in a trove of files sent over by the city as part of a federal lawsuit shocked her family's attorney. That for two years, the family and I, the family long before I was involved, was told that there was no body cam. According to a statement from the city attorney, this 18 second, mostly soundless clip, which we aren't showing due to the graphic nature, was created as Sergeant David Perry tried unsuccessfully to turn on his body camera. The clip, quote, was not apparently available when homicide reviewed video, but it was when internal affairs did later. According to the city attorney's statement, quote, federal law prohibits the commingling of criminal and administrative investigations. Consequently, IA did not communicate the existence of the pre-event buffer clip to homicide. That is the most crap I've heard in a long time, and I'm 56 freaking years old. Cortez thinks the footage should have been made public as soon as reasonably practical, believing that would have fixed the issue over who knew it existed. But we also had a harsh words for the homicide investigator. It's insane to think that he didn't bother looking or didn't didn't make sure that there was or wasn't and any glitches shouldn't come out in July of 2021 for a shooting that took place in March 2019. That's insane. That's just extreme incompetence. And there's no other way to put that. An SAPD spokeswoman says that preliminarily the homicide investigator won't face discipline, noting this was not intentional in any way. Sergeant Perry remains on full duty. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. It is day four in the trial of Otis McCain, accused in the murder of San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi in 2016. Today, another witness to the shooting taking the stand to describe the moments he saw the incident take place. Erica Hernandez is joining us live with more on that testimony. Erica? Yeah, Mark Bissett was visiting San Antonio from Colorado with his family. While driving downtown, he noticed a police car had pulled someone over. He told jurors he then saw a car pull up behind the patrol unit, a person get out and head toward the officer's car. Bissett, who has trained medical experience from being a special forces officer, then described helping render aid to Detective Marconi after the shooting. Uh, when I approached the vehicle, there was another officer there. He was wearing a cream uniform. Um, he was in the process of removing him from the vehicle, so I helped him uh, get him the rest of the way out of the car and lay down and tried to stabilize as best we could. Testimony is still ongoing right now behind me in the 379th District Court. You can watch it live right now on KSAT.com. Live at the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. New at 5, Ricardo Lawson has been found not guilty for the murder of Marcus McGee Sims back in 2019. It happened in the 200 block of East Commerce Street where McGee Sims was found with multiple stab wounds. He was then taken to the hospital where he died from his injuries. 
Lawson arrested for the murder after surveillance footage showed a confrontation between Lawson and McGee Sims. And now an update on a fatal RV fire we told you about last week. The victim has been identified as 60 year old Paul Edward Rose. The fire happened early Friday morning at a property in the 200 block of Reedwell Drive on the east side. Firefighters found his body once the flames were put out. At last check, the cause is still under investigation. The effort to get state Democrats to return home to continue work in the special session now in its fourth day. And right now it is a waiting game. They left for D.C. Monday in an effort to stop what they call restrictive voting legislation from passing. In a statement today, House Speaker Dade Phelan says, quote, in an effort to further compel House Democrats to return to the state of Texas, I am chartering a plane that will be on standby in Washington, D.C. on Saturday. I am demanding all of our colleagues in D.C. to contact my staff immediately in order to secure their seat on the plane and return to Austin in order to do the state's business. The state of Texas is waiting, end quote. At last check, state Democrats said they will stay in D.C. as long as it takes. You can read more about the voting legislation on KSAT.com. And doctors at Baptist hospitals in San Antonio say they're seeing younger adults getting sick, mainly those in their 20s and 30s, and most of them are not vaccinated. The chief medical officer for Baptist Health System says right now there's a small percentage of patients who are vaccinated and are COVID positive. She says their symptoms, though, are very different from those who are not vaccinated. They're not necessarily in the intensive care unit. They're not necessarily requiring uh, more close monitoring or oxygenation. Breakthrough cases or cases where people who are vaccinated test positive for COVID are becoming more common, including comedian Gabriel Iglesias. Today, he announced that he tested positive for COVID-19 and can canceled the rest of his performances here in San Antonio. He says he's had body aches and chills, but otherwise feels pretty good. Hey, outside today, not as much activity on the radar screen, not really as much in terms of the clouds bubbling up and dropping rainfall. Just the fair weather clouds overhead, 89 degrees so far our high temperature for the day today after a morning low of 74. So obviously running a little below average again, the average high now up to 95. We're 93 currently in shirts and Panamaria, Maria, Seguin and Floresville at an even 90 along with Lakey, only 88 in Bernie. 87 Bulverde, and right now Canyon Lake checking in at an even 90. As we go through the evening, sun sets at about 835, 86 degrees at that point. Fairly typical temperatures for this time of year, just running a couple of degrees below average. Humid, turning cloudy overnight, and we do have a shift in our weather pattern that we're watching that's increasing rain chances in the extended forecast. More on that and when the African dust thickens up overhead coming right up. And council members are discussing infrastructure needs as they come up with the city's budget for the next fiscal year. Samuel King joins us now and Samuel San Antonio's east side will certainly be a focus in all this. Definitely, uh, Steve and Alicia, Council District 2 has the highest amount of streets considered failing in the city. That's 76.87 miles or 17% of all streets in the district. Those will need to be reconstructed or reclaimed. Let's take a look at those numbers there. And followed by that is District 3, 63 and a half miles or 14%. Now coming up this evening at 6 o'clock, we hear from Council Member Jalen McKee Rodriguez about his plans and how the money will be allocated to improve streets in those areas, including uh, drainage and the like. Now, as for this evening's traffic in that area, we we'll take a look at that here. This is I-35 at Loop 410. You can see uh, definitely that things are moving uh, there slowly. So let's take a look at a travel time here. This is uh, I-10 inside Loop 410, 14 minutes uh, between downtown and Loop 410, and five minutes going the other way. We'll have another update on traffic throughout the evening. See you, Felicia. Thank you, Samuel. And you at five, check your sunscreen. The company behind five popular spray-ons is telling people to stop using them because lab tests showed they contain carcinogens. 12 on your side is Marilyn Moritz with our recall roundup, which also includes kids' bikes, baby toys, and cat food. 
Before you spray on the sunscreen, a recall. Johnson & Johnson is pulling five aerosol spray-on sunscreens because samples showed low levels of benzene, a chemical that can cause cancer with repeated exposure. The recall is for all SPFs of Aveeno Protect Plus Refresh and Neutrogena's Beach Defense, Cool Dry Sport, Invisible Daily Defense, and Ultra Shear. The company is investigating and giving refunds. If your cat chows on Purina's tuna entrees, check the cans. Nestle Purina is recalling certain Pro Plan Complete Essentials tuna sold in three ounce cans. It could contain bits of black plastic, a choking risk. The best buy date is June 2023. Toss it out and contact your seller. Kids got a new bike. Academy Sports and Outdoors is recalling boys and girls Ozone 500 Elevate models. They can stop unexpectedly. Take it back for a fix or a refund. And Walgreens is recalling 54,000 Winnie the Pooh rattle sets. Parts can come off and babies could choke on them. Get your money back. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is suing Amazon, trying to force them to recall dangerous products sold on their platform, such as faulty hair dryers or carbon monoxide detectors. The products are actually sold by third parties. Amazon says it already takes action when it's notified of safety issues. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Millions of American families will start receiving payments today as part of an expanded child tax credit from the COVID relief law. President Biden touting the credit as a historic effort to fight child poverty and give a working family a break. But as ABC's Elizabeth Schultz reports, the administration is also still fighting to make these payments permanent. In a significant escalation of federal aid to fight poverty, millions of Americans are now starting to receive expanded child tax credits. Today, for families all over our country, for children all over our country. Help is here. The Biden administration is sending out $15 billion to an estimated 60 million children. Qualifying families will receive up to $250 monthly for every child between the ages of 6 and 17, and $300 a month for children under the age of 6. It's historic, and it's our effort to make another giant step toward ending child poverty in America. The changes to the child tax credit are part of the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan passed in March. Not a single Republican in Congress voted for the bill. More families are now eligible to receive the credits. Individuals earning up to $75,000 and couples making up to $150,000 are eligible for the full credit. Single mother of two, Shivani Jones, telling ABC News earlier this year, the monthly credits will be a lifeline. That would be a huge help for my household right now. The expanded payments are temporary, set to expire at the end of the year. This tax cut for working families is something we should extend, not end next year. Now, the Treasury Department says these automatic payments will go to 88 percent of families with children nationwide, but it hasn't laid out a clear plan for how to reach those families whose incomes are so low that they don't usually pay taxes. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. San Antonio International Airport now has a new airline to offer. Breeze Airways has added three nonstop destinations from the Alamo City, where they're headed, and what the airport says you could soon expect. That's next. All right, get this new flights taking off from San Antonio just in time for summer. San Antonio International Airport has added a brand new member to its list of airlines and three nonstop flights to cities in Oklahoma and Arkansas. Our Jonathan Cotto was at Breeze Airways inaugural celebration and spoke with one flyer excited about the airport's new addition. Greeted with a water cannon salute, the San Antonio International Airport welcoming a brand new airline. Jesus Sainz, director of airports for the San Antonio Airport System, says the city is the first to add Breeze Airways to its list of airlines. San Antonio continues to be the number one leisure destination in the state of Texas. We want to be able to bring more and more people to this beautiful city. The airline's CFO, Trent Porter, says they see a lot of potential in San Antonio to execute their model and build the number of direct flights. 
Starting in the fall, we're taking about one aircraft a month, and we'll be we'll be expanding our network significantly. This E-190 aircraft can seat up to 108 passengers, and it's on its first departing flight from the San Antonio International Airport to destination Oklahoma City. One of the new three nonstop routes added to the list. I think it's wonderful because I'll probably be coming to visit my daughter more often since, you know, I can just get on the plane and come and I don't have to stop, you know, have another layover or change planes. Sign says this airline is only the first of a few projects in the works. We will be starting uh, inaugural flight with JetBlue as well, and they will be flying to New York and to Boston. And we'll be talking about those in, 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 in months to come. Jonathan Cotto. KSAT 12 News. Live cam outside. All right, there's some fluffy white clouds out there. It's fluffy so white. But fluffy. not the rain we saw yesterday yet. They're not cumulus clouds, folks. They're fluffy white clouds. Exactly. Aren't they? Yes, and they're not the rain making clouds that we saw yesterday and so many days past, but. Get ready for a weather pattern shift as we get into next week. So quiet the next couple of days and through the weekend. But as we get into next week, we'll have a shift in our weather pattern that I'll tell you about, and that's going to increase rain chances again. So some good maintenance rain on the way again and Saharan dust. It is increasing. We'll get right to that in a moment. First, let's take a look at our satellite and radar. We had a few isolated showers out there along the coastal plain closer to the coastline between I 10 and I 37 and especially closer to Houston earlier today. Right now, nothing falling within our area. Just some of those fair weather clouds and across the state for the most part, it's looking pretty quiet with the exception of the typical spots closer to the Gulf of Mexico, especially now in East Texas and even stretching into Louisiana. So quiet for the most part right now. Let's talk about the overall weather pattern and how it's going to change, which will increase our rain chances again. Upper level high is basically over Southern California at this time, and this is going to be dominating just to the west of us, but getting a little bit closer over the next couple of days through the weekend. And then notice as we get into next week, it retreats northward. We get this northerly flow aloft that opens the door for this upper level disturbance that we're anticipating to arrive by Tuesday, lasting through Wednesday and even on into Thursday. And it should have some pretty good energy and moisture with it. So that's going to boost our rain chances again. Next couple of days, mainly just some of those coastal showers between I-10 and I-37 and especially within a few counties of the Gulf Coast. So about a 10% chance basically as we get into the weekend, maybe 20% on Sunday could have a few other pop ups out there. But Tuesday, Wednesday, that's when we boost those rain and storm chances up to 60% and even Thursday looking scattered in nature as well. Let's talk about the African dust. We've been talking about it for the past week or so. It's back in the picture now. It's been overhead today. It thinned out a little bit, but there's this bigger batch of dust higher concentration over the Bay of Campeche and the Yucatan Peninsula. Watch as we go through time. The steering winds in our atmosphere are going to push that our way Friday 1 p.m. The dust in the sky is starting to thicken a bit and it's really going to be at its peak for us, at least in the short term here, uh, Friday afternoon all the way through Saturday and then start to dis disperse a bit as we get into Sunday and thin out a bit. So uh, Friday and Saturday is basically when you'll notice more dust in the sky, but not overly hazy out there right now. 89 degrees dew point is 71. Feels like 95 when you factor in that humidity. 97 the air temperature in Del Rio now. Pleasanton's at 93, Catula 94. Meanwhile, 85 in Kerrville, 86 in Fredericksburg. Not bad for a July afternoon. Our average high temperature is 95 today, and we didn't even come close to that. We were within five, six degrees here in town. Tomorrow we'll start the day at 75, then make it up into the lower 90s. About 92 the high temperature, the typical routine of some low clouds early and then nothing but sunshine by the midday and afternoon, a southeasterly breeze at 10 to 15. More specifically, Del Rio about 100 tomorrow afternoon. So back to the century mark along the Rio Grande. Eagle Pass about 95, Laredo 99. You get up into the hill country close to 90 degrees, even Bernie at 90. New Braunfels about 92, along with Lavernia, Castroville 93 for the high temperature tomorrow. Temperatures are going to go up just a little bit. 93 Saturday, Sunday by Monday, 94. But then notice how they drop off with those boosted rain chances by Tuesday and Wednesday. We are not in a drought. The aquifer is about 11 feet above average, but hey, 
I'll take that maintenance rain when we can get it this time of year. Exactly. Me too. It cools it down, and then now we're definitely starting to feel that heat. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Adam. All right. Last night's game was all Milwaukee, and they needed it to be. Well, it was probably the best finals game Definitely. we've seen so far, and everybody's talking about the big-time block delivered by Giannis Antetokounmpo, who admits he thought he was going to get dunked on. When we come back, we'll show you what happened in Game 4, and cracking down, says the Big 12, and the horns down when we come back. The Milwaukee Bucks have gotten even with the Phoenix Suns and two wins apiece after taking game four at home last night, but with a lot of more of a challenge for Phoenix. It's after the Suns got off to a hot start. Devin Booker only had 10 points in game three at 20 in the first half to get the Suns out to a four-point lead until Chris Middleton hits a three, and it's a tie ball game at the half, 52 all right there. Booker stays hot, owns the third quarter, gets around Giannis Antetokounmpo, finishes with a left-hand layup. Seven for seven in the quarter, 18 points of his 42 before picking up his fifth foul and having to sit with one and a half minutes to play. It appeared the Suns are going to tie it up, but Giannis Antetokounmpo comes in for the big-time block of the playoffs on DeAndre Ayton. This is one for the ages. Combine that with Chris Paul losing the ball, and Middleton would finish on the other end. He would have 40. The Bucks take game four, 109-103, making this best of seven series now best of three. After the game, everyone's talking about the block, but Giannis admitting he thought he was going to get posterized. I saw the play coming. Uh, I saw that uh, Chris, Chris Paul was throwing the lob. So I'm, like, I just, I'm just going to jump vertical, you know, towards the rim. Hopefully I can, you know, be there in time. And uh, I was there in time and was able to get a good a block and uh, go down uh, and get to a point. So, so uh, it was a great house play. There you go. So game five will be Saturday in Phoenix. Game six now will take place Tuesday in Milwaukee. Big 12 will be cracking down on taunting this coming season. That includes the Horns down sign. This according to the Big 12 coordinated officials, Greg Burks of the Big 12 Media Days in Arlington. But a penalty depends on where an opposing player uses the Horns down sign. According to Burks, the Horns down symbol is directed at a Texas player. That's probably going to be a foul. If it's directed towards the crowd, probably would not be a penalty. We continue our previews of the state high school football rankings. According to Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, we've already covered 6A, 5A, and 4A. We move on today to 3A, one of the top teams in the state in Class 3A. According to Division One and Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine is a Poteet Aggies. The Aggies are ranked number 21 in the state. 14 starters are turning off the team to finish 8-3 last year. And not the only team in our area in the top 25, both Division One and Division Two. Division One has a, 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 what would you call a traffic jam almost. Hallettsville, Columbus, Yoakum, Lano, Poteet, Jordan, and in Division Two, only one, number 14, Poth. And the leaderboard looks like this. The British Open after the first round, Louis, Louis Oosthuizen has a one-stroke lead over Texas Jordan Speed. The rest of the field looks a little bit like this. Does some other favorites would also include Ricky Fowler, one under. Look at Phil Mickelson, 10 over after the first round. So let's focus on Speed. He's oh, doing absolutely. Well. Absolutely. Phil, eh. Not so much. Not so much. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Sure. We'll be right back. Little, little added Saharan dust in the sky. Friday and Saturday, radar generally quiet until we get to about Tuesday of next week when we boost those rain chances. All right, thanks for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.